My full name is Patricia, and it was high school, now Hillman. I was born in Tulare, California in 1928. My uh, father was John High School, married my mother, Margaret Thomas, high school. She was a teacher, and uh, of course they lived in Tulare. My, on my father's side, his father was Jefferson Davis High School, and uh, he was married to Lucy Eva App High School. And then going up another generation, uh, the connection here is my uh, grandmother, and her mother was Leanna Charity Donner, one of the survivors of the Donner Party, and she was married to John, John App, and they lived in Jamestown. Uh, you know, I was uh, 18 months old, I think, when Leanna died, and I do not remember being there. There are pictures of me uh, with her holding me, and there's one particular picture that I show when I give Donner Party talks of Leanna, who's in her 90s, her early 90s, and uh, my grandmother standing next to her holding me, and then my sister, who's three and a half years older than I, is standing in front of Leanna. I am told that Leanna rarely smiled, and I can understand that because I think she'd been through a lot of trauma as a child. But the, she was a, a very friendly woman to family members only, not to strangers. I can tell by the look on her face in some of the pictures that she enjoyed her grandchildren. And my sister, who, as I say, is older than I, does remember her uh, as a person, not a touchy-feely person, but still somebody who obviously enjoyed her family. My first remembrance of even being connected to the Donner Party was when I was probably about eight. I know that my mother said to us, don't ask even my grandmother about the Donner Party because her mother, Leanna, never wanted to talk about it and she never uh, wanted it to be referred to. Well, the California curriculum, state curriculum, uh, studies California history in the fourth grade. So I talked to fourth graders and uh, I've also talked to a lot of civic groups and I've traveled around and talked to historical groups, but the kids are the most fun and I always take a big chart. I'm kind of old fashioned, so I don't have a PowerPoint. I take a chart and show, show how the Donners traveled across the United States, talked a lot. I talk a lot about their, their difficulties and their heartbreaks. You know, fourth graders are watching a lot of TV now, uh, so they want to know about the starvation and the cannibalism. And I remember one time I gave that talk to fourth graders and I didn't mention it and they were devastated. They wanted to know about that. And usually it's, a, it's kind of a storytelling and then I always open it up to uh, questions and get some wonderful questions because these kids are thinkers. I also have a little box of, I call them goodies that I take. Uh, square nails, uh, shoes, shoe buttons, shoes, um, gold, little pieces of gold, old hammers that are made, the handles are hand hewn, and uh, try to get them to put themselves into that era because my great grandmother, who I feature in these talks, was about their age when she had to go through this ordeal. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention about Leanna is uh, she didn't, as I told you before, ever want to talk about it. She didn't want her children to talk about it or her grandchildren. She was told, apparently, by her stepmother when she left Donner Lake to walk out to Sutter's Fort where the uh, five little girls who were all sisters and half-sisters lived uh, waiting for their parents to come out of the mountains her parents didn't survive, of course. Um, they were told by their stepmother, never talk to anybody about this. And so my great-grandmother uh, was between 94 and 95, be because she died at 95, when for some reason 
she decided to open up and talk to a young newspaper reporter from the Modesto Bee. And she told him the whole story. She was, her thoughts were very clear. And uh, it was interesting that after that amount of time, because she was 10 and 11 during that winter that she was at Donner Lake, that she could remember all the details. Now, this is not to say that some of the details hadn't come out before because she talked to her daughter, Rebecca, and also to her son, John Quincy, and they told the story uh, to people who were writing about them, and I'm particularly thinking of Charles McGlashan, who wrote the first uh, book on the Donner Party. Uh, but for her to go back and tell this young man what had happened in her own words is amazing. And I always read a little pieces of that to my fourth graders when I talk to them, because to hear in her own words how difficult it was for her to walk out and how hungry they were and how on the last uh, day they had food as they were walking out, she ate all her little piece of uh, what we would call jerky. Uh, in one meal, and it was supposed to last for dinner and breakfast the morning. She ate it all that night. And the next morning, uh, she said to sit and look around and see everybody eating their little piece, and she didn't have one. It was devastating to her, and her sister looked at her and broke her tiny piece in half and shared it with her. And for fourth graders to hear that in her own words, I think, has a really profound effect on me, on, and it does on me every time I tell it. Yeah.